Let's bring in Naram Barvis, chief economist at IHS. He's been covering the global economy for 35 years and is one of the most accurate overall economic forecasters, making him a Bloomberg best. He joins us now from Lexington, Massachusetts. Naraman, welcome back to Bottom Line. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Mark. Naraman, before we get to this debt deal, let's talk about that ISM number that Zara was just talking to Mr. Valdez about. Uh, the number just above 50, just above contraction. What are we to make of this? Well, it's very troubling, and it's unfortunately symptomatic of a broad-based retreat that we're seeing in manufacturing across the world. Just about every country, their uh, you know, purchasing managers index for manufacturing has been eroding the last few months, and it's quite low. A couple of countries is actually below that 50 mark. So this is a pervasive worldwide kind of phenomenon. It's not just a U.S. issue. So yeah. manufacturing, which had been a powerhouse of the recovery, seems to have lost steam completely. So what happened to all of that talk that the second half of this year we'd see this economy picking up some momentum? It's evaporating a little bit, unfortunately. I mean, our best guess is growth in the third quarter, the quarter we're in right now, between 1 and 2 percent, probably closer to 1 percent. And then maybe we'll get a little bit more of a bounce in the, in the fourth quarter, but I'm not going to hold my breath. So I think average in the second half, about 2%. Naraman, let's talk about what's been going on in Washington. Senator Mark Warner, the Democrat from Virginia, said that the debt ceiling deal reached over the weekend helps the nation avoid default. But quoting here, he said, this doesn't get us to the core problem of how do we take on tax reform? How do we take on entitlement reform? Is he right? He's absolutely right, because they, you know, they, as you know, they, they've made this sort of down payment of a trillion dollars in terms of deficit reduction, but then gave another one and a half trillion to this commission that hasn't been appointed yet that's supposed to come back. So they, they kicked the can down the road some more, and now having made this down payment, so a lot of the tough decisions still have to be made. Well, the Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid also making his voice known. He said of the agreement, everyone had to give up something. Who gave up the most? Well, I think in the end, uh, the president and the Democrats gave up the most because essentially in this current agreement, uh, at least in the first you know, trillion, there's no tax increases of any kind, which, of course, the uh, Democrats were asking for. So in that sense, if anybody capitulated, it was the president and to a lesser extent, the Democrats in Congress. Well, will the enforcement mechanisms in that deal, including those automatic spending cuts that have been talked about, help or hurt the country as the lawmakers in the White House move towards more deficit reduction? Well, you ask a very good question. The history of these triggers, these automatic cuts and so forth, is not a good one in the mm -hmm. sense that Congress has often circumvented them. So I don't hold out a lot of hope for this. I think, I think Congress will have to make some of the tough decisions in the end. Well, they, it, can't just sh sh sorry, they can't just shirk their responsibility. Well, interestingly enough, this weekend, uh, New York senior Senator Chuck Schumer, he was on uh, CBS, he was on Face the Nation, and he was saying that this kind of trigger is, in fact, a sword over the heads of Congress and will force them to act. You don't agree? Well, that's, that's true in theory, and I think he's right in theory, but in practice we've had things like, you know, in the 1980s we had Graham Rudman Hollings was supposed to balance our budget, didn't do it. There have been other kinds of triggers that haven't worked, so I'm a little skeptical, frankly. Mm. Well, would this deal be enough to calm the global markets? As our Zara Burton was just telling us, the markets right now, I guess, after some initial euphoria, all the major indices are down right now. Well, as she was saying, the markets have sort of focused away from the debt ceiling negotiations and, and foc refocused on the weak data. So I think that's what's going on today. But certainly, you know, it's better than the alternative, namely the fact that they seem to have an agreement is better than not having an agreement. So in that sense, this is good news. Is the glass half full or half empty? Well, I think it's half full. Well, are the contents of the deal enough to prevent a downgrade of U.S. debt by the credit rating agencies? That's a very good question. Uh, uh, certainly S&P, which has been the most aggressive here, it may not be enough to satisfy them, but Moody's and some of the others, Fitch and so forth, I don't think are being quite as aggressive. So we could be in a situation where Moody's downgrades, but the other two don't. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, the answer is we don't really know yet. Nariman, in our last 30 seconds, should the focus be on economic growth or reducing the deficit? Well, certainly in the next two years, the focus should be growth. But beyond that, it should be the deficit. But I mean, another way of saying is we should cut, but not yet. All right, Naraman Barovish, Chief Economist, IHS Global Insight, joining us from Lexington, Massachusetts. Naraman, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much.